Listen, and Gehazi said, you making all that noise, I don't see nothing. All that jumping around y'all doing in church, I don't see nothing. <laughs> you know how people are. You go to all that church and you up there shouting and stuff. I ain't seen a change in your life yet. All that shouting, you just the same that you were when you went to the church. But when Elijah tell him, go look again. I'm going to still make the sound. You just keep looking. I'm still going to praise him. You keep looking. I'm still going to worship him. You keep looking. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ooh. Hallelujah. Is there a word from the Lord? Yes, there is a word from the Lord. I'd like to say good morning to all of our social media platform. Thank you for tuning in with us this morning. I'm... Uh, I'm aware that you, you can go anywhere else, but here we are, Beyond the Veil Worships You. Worship, I'm sorry, Beyond the Veil Worship Center is thankful for you for being here. Uh, we want to continue to lift up uh, Pastor Ernest Gaskins, who was our organist, and he got sick on the way to church, but he turned around, and, and uh, his wife and the rest of the praise team took us in. And Izzy holding up a bass. <laughs> and our drummers, both of them, you just, you know, y'all walking us up into the presence. So we are thankful. I'm thankful to God for this house, Branch of Zion. So before I even go down that road of being thankful and crying and stuff. I just want you to know I appreciate you. Now let's turn to the word of God. <laughs> Is there a word from the Lord? Yes. Our anchor scripture will be coming from Joel 2, chapter, chapter 2, verses 23, um, among 23 through 25. When you have it, can you stand to your feet? Joel, J-O-E-L, Joel. Chapter 2, verses 23, <laughs> and we're going to go to verse 20, 26. And the word of the Lord reads, be, be glad, then ye children of Zion, Zion represents the church, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. And the floors shall be full of wheat, and the vats shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army, which I sent among you, and you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed. Mm. Hallelujah. And if I close the book and went home right now, you have a word from the Lord. <laughs> Can you turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's raining. Tell another neighbor, neighbor, it is raining. Hallelujah. Put your hand on your chest and say, it's raining. Give God glory as you take your seats. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're not getting ready for the rain. It's raining. 
As a matter of fact, his scripture said, I'm sending the former and the latter together. So it sounds to me like it's thunderstorming. Y'all ain't heard nothing in this house. It's raining. He didn't say prepare for the rain. He said it's raining right now. Good God Almighty. I know you're saying, but I don't feel like it's raining. Does that mean it's not raining? Whether you feel like it or not, the rain is. Hallelujah, Father. Your word is blessed. Bless your maid servant as we deliver your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. 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 I'm thankful for I'm thankful for the blood I'm thankful for the blood and I'm thankful for the rain <laughs> those of us who have been following along uh, with the word that has been coming forth from the mouth of the Lord has seen by testimony and I'm sure can I tell you that there are other people in here that got testimonies about the blood if you got a testimony just from last week about the blood, just let me see your hand, see? When God sends his word, he always performs. We are thankful. We are so thankful. But he's saying here, he said through our prayer line, we have been on our daily prayer line for over seven years. Every morning um, for seven years, not missed a morning. We have been there. God has called us on. First, he called us on uh, what is about 40 days of, of prayer and, and then from there he said keep going so seven years later we are here <laughs> while others have gone in and out God told us to stay in that place of prayer because he needed for us to hear his voice and so as we hearing his voice he even prepared us for things to come did he not while others are preparing now with vitamin D, we have been doing vitamin D, C, and zinc for how long? Almost six years. He told us to get our immune systems built up. The thing about listening to God is that you understand that he is creator. He's creator of both heaven and earth. And he doesn't just speak when there is a crisis or calamity, he's always speaking. And he wants his people to be in a position to hear what he is saying before it comes. And so now he is saying to us through this week, remember the word came that there was, it's raining now. How many of you were on the prayer call when, when the word of the Lord came and said it's raining now? As a matter of fact, he says, I'm send, this is the latter rain. And he also said that I'm sending it in abundance. See, y'all missed a place to shout. So therefore, our anchor scripture has to do with the, the, with the former rain and the latter rain being given together. Uh, verse 23 said, Be of Zion and rejoice in the Lord your God. He said, I need the church to rejoice. You might have to change seats. You might have to change seats. He doesn't want you to rejoice after it. You feel like you sense the rain. He said, therefore, be glad right now, and I need you to rejoice right now for what I am. If you trust me, somebody said, I trust you. If you trust me, uh, you'll praise me right now, says God. Uh, you'll praise me, though you don't feel the latter rain, and you don't feel the former rain, uh, but that lets me know that you trust me. Sit, 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 sit. For he hath given you the former rain moderately. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He said, I gave you the former rain moderately. And he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month or together. That means there was a, a cataclysmic uh, a, 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 a collision that is about to happen over your life. Uh, somebody praise him for the cataclysmic collision of the yesterday blessing and the tomorrow blessing, and it's happening now. Yeah. But wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. But he says, I have given you that. I've given you the latter, the former rain, and I have given you the rain for tomorrow. Not I will give it to you, but I have given you yesterday's blessing and tomorrow's blessing now. So what should you do? If, I'm glad you asked me. 
What are you saying while it's raining? Ask for more rain. See, you missed it. You missed it. He said, in the time of the latter rain, you got to ask for more rain. Not for rain today because you got to keep it going. Tell your neighbor, I got to keep it going. Because if I ask for rain while it's raining, that means that he's going to bring my tomorrow. I'm asking for tomorrow. I'm not going to consume it all today. I know that this is not it. There's more coming. And you have to, that's what Zechariah says. I don't know about you, but he says in Ephesians 3.20, he's, he's, he says he's willing to do and able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you would ask or think. But what is it? It's according to the power that works where? In you. If you have no power in you, there's going to be no rain. Put your hand on your belly and say, well up power in me. It's not going to be according to what the bishop says. It's not going to be according to what the elder says. It's not going to be according to what the praise team sang. It's got to be in you. Anything that God gives has got to come from the power that is in you. And that's why he dwells and lives in you. When you plead the blood of Jesus, it wasn't just the word. It was the power that was in you that moved toward the atmosphere over your children, over your finances. He said, I'm going to do it according to the power. Lord Jesus said, I came to give you the Holy Spirit and power. And power. Someone shout power. Yeah, and that's called the abundance. So, Zechariah 10 one says that in the time of the latter rain, the Lord will make flashing clouds. He'll give them showers of rain, grass in the field for everyone. This is the season you're going to experience not just the drizzle. Y'all don't have it. Mm -mm. Uh -uh. I'm not here for a drizzle. I didn't, I didn't go through the hell I went through for a drizzle. Can I get four people that know all, everything you experience is not just for a little shower? <laughs> Ooh, not just a drizzle and not just a shower. Not just a little sprinkling. He says, in this season, you're going to experience more. Not just mercy drops. Not just a little shower, a little sprinkling. But this season, you're going to experience harvest. Listen, tangible manifestations of the breakthrough you have been believing God for. Good God Almighty. Let me, let me just say, I need about six people who know that everything you experienced, you were experienced because you were expecting more than what you went through. The latter rain has to do with harvest. Ooh, the former rain has to do with planting. He says, and then the season in between that has to do with waiting. He said, guess what? Because you're in the right position, the time when you plant and the time when you harvest are coming together. The time when you cry and the time when you praise are coming together. Come on, tell somebody it's coming together. I'm sorry I'm preaching to myself, but when I started preaching about the blood, the enemy attacked me too. And so y'all don't even know I'm fighting my way through this morning because I know that whatever I put in the ground is coming up with a harvest. Yeah. 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 Oh. Isaiah, I mean, is.
hear you, God. Isaiah 10. 27 says, and it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off his shoulder and his yoke from off his neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. What is in you is the anointing. I need to speak to about six people. <laughs> According to the anointing in your life, he says, I'm going to remove the burden off of your neck. You have never been yoked down until you got the burden of sickness and disease and lack on your neck. And he said that the yoke is going to be destroyed because of the anointing. What does that mean? The anointing makes your neck so fat uh, that the yoke can't get around it. Oh, let me speak to about six, six, six people. That means you are yoked uh, to that thing that was bringing you down. But he says, I'm going to anoint you so fat uh, that it's going to break off anything that's trying to yoke. Y'all ain't receiving it. Y'all are not receiving it. Y'all are not receiving it. Good God Almighty. Good God Almighty. When you are yoked, that means you got something around you that everywhere you go, it follows you. Every time you do something positive, negative pulls you back. Can I speak to about four people? Even when you pray, you can't pray because you're thinking about the thing that's holding you back. I need to speak to about four people. I says I'm breaking that, that yoke that is. No longer will you be followed by defeat. No longer will you be followed by depression. No longer will you be followed by lack. No longer will you be followed by failure. No longer will you be followed by depression. No longer will you be followed by anxiety. Because the anointing has made your neck break that yoke. Tell somebody it's raining in here. It's raining in here. You couldn't feel it because you were yoked to depression. You couldn't feel it because you were yoked to failure. But I declare if you turn your neck today, that yoke is coming off. ain't got to shout out shout for myself you ever felt a heaviness when you're trying to move forward you start to start that business and it's all the stuff come along with it the yoke is destroyed today you better receive it it's destroyed today that thing that keeps trying to bring your distraction on you it's destroyed because of the anointing. That grief is gone because of the anointing. I don't know about you, but I feel the rain. I feel the rain. I, you're in position to feel the rain. What does the rain feel like? The rain feels like the yoke has come off. What does the rain feel like? The rain is feeling like I don't have to deal with the situation anymore. God has got it. for 
more rain. See, y'all don't even know. Y'all satisfied with this rain. He said, in the midst of this rain, ask for more rain. Father, give me more rain. I ask for more rain. Can I get, put your hand on your neighbor's hand and say, we asking for the rain. More rain, more rain, more rain. I'm greedy, I want more rain. Rain, God, rain. I want more. I don't care what you think, I want more. You may think I have enough, but I want more of God. I want more peace. I want more joy. I want more love. I want more deliverance. I want more breakthrough. Hallelujah. He says it pleases me when you ask for more because the more you ask for, according to Ephesians 3.20, I'm giving you more than you ask. So ask for more because he's going to give you more than that. Receive the rain. Receive the rain. Listen. Listen. And I think scripture when I was going back and reading it. Bible says that Elijah came to Ahab, who was the king at that time. Remember, Ahab is married to who? Jezebel. He's the king, and Obadiah is the governor at that time. And so Elijah comes and says to Obadiah, tell Ahab I need to meet with him. Tell him I need to tell go Obadiah go tell go tell Ahab I need to see him uh-huh. Uh-huh. and then and Ahab say I mean and, and Obadiah says every time I see you he said you want me to go tell Ahab that you want to speak and you want to see him and you want to speak to him and then what's going to happen is I come back to where you are and you may not be here and Ahab going to kill me because you gone after all you got a habit of disappearing He said, the spirit of God got a habit of taking you different places. And I sometimes I can't find you where I left you. Can I get some Elijah's in here that the spirit of God is going to take you to a place where you can't be found? Y'all thinking 
too low. You thinking too low. They're coming back to look for you in the old place of complaining, the old place of debt, the old place of lack, the old place where you used to just not be uh, 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 able to do anything that God called you to do. Elijah was always moving. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, I'm always moving. Y'all ain't got that. Y'all ain't got that. Tell your neighbor, I'm always moving. When God tells me to move, I'm moving. Elijah says, I'll stay here. I'm going to stay here. Tell Ahab to come on. I will stay here. And so Obadiah said, I'm going to tell him. But remember this, that when all of the prophets were being killed, I'm the one that healed, healed the hundred prophets of God. He said, I hid 50 in one place. Read the scripture for yourself. And I hid 50 in the other place. So promise me that you're going to be here so I won't get killed. Good God Almighty. God, show me. Bring him in remembrance of what you have done. Oh, y'all think that's too arrogant? I told the Lord this week when I was being attacked, I said, Father, you said when I was on that job downtown that you were going to take better care of me than the world ever could. And I trusted you and came off of a job. And so I need you to know right now, God, that you are a God of your promise. Take care of your servant, God. Your servant needs you because I am your servant. God said, I don't care. Bring me in remembrance of everything that you have done for the kingdom. Tell somebody that I'm bringing God. Y'all thought it was done and, and you didn't and, and nobody knew the good things you did. God, Obadiah said, remember, I was the one. When the prophets of when the prophets of God were being killed and sought out, I, I made a cave for them. I risked my life to hide them because I loved you, Lord. When they talked about me, I spoke up for you, God. When it wasn't popular, I still lived for you, God. Come on, somebody need to say hallelujah. So many things that I got looked over for, I pulled the cover off of my head and said, wait a minute, God. My reputation got ruined because I made a stand for you. They talked about me and I didn't say anything for you, God. Remember. I need to go home now. Verse 15, it says, and Elijah said, as the Lord of hosts liveth before whom I stand, I'll surely show myself unto him that day. That means, he said, as the Lord of hosts lives and what you said, I'm, I'm going to show myself. I'm going to stay here. When Ahab came back and found him, they had the showdown at the mountain with the, the, gods, of, uh, with the gods of Baal and with the, Jesus, with the Lord. Remember that showdown? Yeah, that showdown that took place. That was, that was awesome, wasn't it? Yeah, he said, uh, 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 Elijah said, go get your God. You trying to intimidate me? Go get your God. You trying to make me run away from this thing that God called me to? Go get your God with a little G. And we're going to see whose God stands strong. See, I need, I need tough people that will say, go get your God. You're going to leave me by myself? Go get your God. And see, my God says, he says he's never going to leave me. No. He says, as a matter of fact, my God answers by fire. 
Tell your neighbor, neighbor, my God answers by fire. See, y'all missed it. He, yeah, you, you mess with his children, he comes and brings the fire to your enemies. Y'all was wondering why I say fire to the God answers by fire. At the same time, there had been no rain for three years. God's showing who he is. But he says to Elijah, prepare yourself. Prepare yourself. Uh -huh. My word to you is prepare yourself. Prepare, tell your family, prepare yourself. Tell your spouse, prepare yourself. Because things are about to shift. Hallelujah. The prophet said there was a shifting in the atmosphere. Things are about to shift. Y'all naive. I need about six people that understand the term shift. Take your right foot and move it over. And then put your left foot beside it and say shift. Somebody is raining. Lord, y'all missing it. It's raining. If you stay in that same position, you're going to be stuck. Then the Bible says in verse number 41, our, our, our anchor scripture, it says, uh, Elijah, he even went to Ahab, that wicked Ahab. And he said, you get up, you eat, and you drink. He said, because there's about to be a shift happening. But he said, there is a sound of abundance of rain. I can't see it right now, but I can hear it. I can't see it right now. But I can hear it. I can't feel it right now. But I can hear it. I don't even know where it's coming from. But I just know I hear something in the spirit. And it sounds like abundance. He didn't say I just hear rain. He says I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. When prophetess was praying, she said, God said, make the sound. That means abundance has a sound. it has a sound before it has a look it's got a sound I gotta hear it before it manifests I gotta hear myself coming out of this thing before I see it I hear you God I hear the sound I'm sorry I don't like church people that say this just the way I you hit if you hit the number we gonna hear a sound before you hit the when you play the slot machine you say come on hallelujah we the only people that don't want to make a sound when God get ready to bless us someone saw come on God Excuse us.
is on social media, but we're making a sound that's going to permeate the atmosphere. We're making a sound that's going to go to our houses. We're taking a sound that's going to go to our jobs. We're making a sound that's going to go to where our businesses are. Make the sound. hear the sound something's coming something's coming something's coming I hear the sound something's coming I hear the engine starting up Y'all think I'm crazy now. Woo! Because the sound I'm making right now is for next week. The sound I'm making now is for next month. The sound I'm making now is for next year. The sound I'm making now is for 10 years down the road. Because the sound I made yesterday was for today. Elijah said, I, I hear the sound. He said, wake up, Ahab. Get yourself ready. Why are you going to wake your enemy up and tell them to get ready? Because God won't want them to be asleep on what he's about to do. <laughs> I want you to know that this is nobody but God. Wake up, wake up. You've been watching me anyway. Wake up. God about to show you who he is. Wake up. Don't you go to sleep now. There's a sound coming. God's getting ready to do. Wake up. Wake up. Get ready. Get in position because you're going to see this. Bible says Elijah got up. He went and he laid on, the, on Mount Carmel with his face between his knees. He got in the intercessory position. You ain't never intercede till you get down like that. You can't intercede laid up in your bed. Intercession comes when you hump your hands down before the Lord. And you get right in his presence. And you bow before the Lord. And you put your head down knowing that you're not worthy to even look upon his face. Where are my intercessors? Because sometimes people need you to get in an awkward position and hold that position. You ain't prayed till you got in an awkward position and God say, stay right there, stay right there, stay right there. Bible says he prayed and said to his servant now you go look at the sea I hear the sound now go look he didn't say go look and then praise the sound becomes before the manifestation see y'all miss it cause because faith is the substance of things hopeful and the evidence of things not seen. So faith says, praise me and make the sound for that which is not yet seen. See, y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. 
Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. So you might have to change a row because God is bringing healing in this particular season, but it's going to become because of a sound that is being made. Listen, listen. Abundance means to have more than you need in large amounts. Abundance means that I'm just not going to get what I need right now. It's going to be so much good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running. Someone shot us raining. See, he, he said what to do. Ask more now. Ask more now. Ask more now. Your bills already paid. Ask more now. Your kids still doing good. Ask more now. Come on, ask. I'm, I'm almost there. The latter rain is going to bring your family blessing. Y'all not hearing me. Say, prove it to me, preacher. Deuteronomy 11 and 21. It says, mm -hmm. If the place which the Lord thy God had chosen to put his name there be too far. 1121, it says that your days may be multiplied and the days of your children. So if you don't care about yourself, you need to send that sound to the next generation. Wait, you missed it. You missed it. That in your days, that your days may be multiplied and the days of your children, where in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers to give them as the days of heaven upon the earth. He said that thing is already done in heaven. It needs to be released. I'm going to bless your children because there was a promise over the next generation before you got here. Remember, the blessing comes to the fourth generation. Y'all not getting me. Until you have had a child that has been under the attack of the enemy... You won't understand that your praise today is destroying everything that wants to take them out tomorrow. That's why Psalms 150 said, let everything that have breath Praise is the sound of abundance. Somebody needs to send a sound for their grandchildren. Children, but 
But if you had made it here, the enemy cannot prosper because of the sound of the abundance of rain. I don't know who this is for, but I think it's for about everybody in here. <laughs> Good God Almighty. And Gehazi is Elijah's servant. <laughs> need another pa another neighbor because you're a little bit too quiet for what I'm trying to do. You're a little bit too quiet for the healing I'm trying to manifest. See, because I got somebody that's on, that's getting ready to die. I need you to make the sound. making all that noise, I don't see nothing. All that jumping around y'all doing in church, I don't see nothing. You know how people are. You go to all that church and you up there shouting and stuff. I ain't seen a change in your life yet. All that shouting, you just the same that you were when you went to the church. But when Elijah tell him, go look again. <laughs> I'm going to still make the sound, you just keep looking. I'm still going to praise him, you keep looking. I'm still going to worship him, you keep looking. Tell your neighbor, keep looking. Keep praising something that's about to happen. It's about to break. Keep looking. Keep looking. Keep looking. Keep looking. Keep looking. Tell them keep looking. Keep looking. I dare you to speak to your enemies and say keep looking. You thought you thought my child. You put you put my child in the grave. Keep looking. You thought I was bankrupt. Keep looking. You thought I wasn't going to make it through this. Keep looking. I'm sending a sound. Keep looking. Keep 
I'm looking too. <laughs> While I make the sound, I'm still looking. You look too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You thought my children weren't going to college. Keep looking. The scholarship is on its way. Keep looking. I'll make the sound. You keep looking. And it, it, Gehazi kept coming back and saying, I don't see nothing. Isn't that like the enemy to make you discouraged? I shouted today, God, but I didn't see nothing. Keep shouting and keep looking. told him to keep going back around the seventh time. What happened on the seventh time? Gehazi came back and said, you know what? You ain't gonna believe this. I see a fist. A, cl a cloud looked like the size of a fist. Tell him to keep looking. Because that's just the entrance of my blessing. Yeah. Tell him, keep, it, Gehazi even had to say, it's coming. <laughs> Elijah said, what you see, Gehazi, I see a cloud the size of a fist. I see a little change on the doctor's report. I see my child is talking about Jesus. It's small right now, but the closer it gets, the bigger it's got. Good God Almighty, because it's raining. Tell your neighbor it's raining. Because it can still rain through small clouds. You keep making the sound, mama. You keep making the sound, daddy. You keep making the sound, grandma. You keep making the sound, grandpa. You keep making the sound, praise team. You keep making a sound, ministers. You keep making a sound, husbands. You keep making a sound. Something's about to change. Give God glory. Jesus was on the cross. The Bible says just before he gave up the ghost, the Bible says he cried with a loud voice. And you can't make a sound. He cried with a loud voice and said, it is finished. Even on the cross, he made a sign. Even on the cross, he was shifting your life. Even on the cross, they said he never said a mumbling word. No, he let out a sound. He said, It's finished, it's over. The rain is here. And the Bible says the earth quaked. The Bible says the earth quaked. Lord, the sun, he went down because it was at noon. It was dark. All because of a sound. He was shifting people out of hell. And they saw people running around on the earth because of a sound. You better make the sound. 
You make that sound so the enemy can release your family. I just, I just don't do that. I just don't do that. Then get another, get another partner. Because this is life and death. And it's in the power. Aren't you glad Jesus made a sound? He made a sound for you and for me. He put hell on notice. You can't have him. He put death on notice. You can't have him. He put the grave on notice. You can't have him. Jesus made the sound and the door of the church is open.